We paid tree climbers to put our helium miner as high as we could. You see, many of us see the future in what we do, and what you're about to see is testimony to that. Helium mining has taken us so far, and followers of this channel are reaching new heights. Bro, they put your video on their Twitter page, bro. <laughs> I was hired to plan, take measurements, and coordinate with tree climbers to get the job done in under 48 hours. Pretty simple, right? Let's have some fun. Shortly after arriving, what I like to do is I like to make sure that we have everything that we need and kind of just go through all the materials that are presented for us. So for this install, the router is upstairs as you notice, and then what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to run the power over ethernet through the attic, out of the attic, and then back down the side of the house. We're gonna have to run the cable underground and up into the tree, which is where the miner will be placed at the very top. Now for this install, we use 60 feet of conduit, 200 feet of ethernet cable, a 5.8 dBi antenna from Rock Wireless, solar shield, a lightning arrestor, and 150 foot of grounding cable. And then we also use a four foot grounding rod, the Bobcat enclosure kit, which is also from Rock Wireless, which includes the electrical tape, the vulcanizing tape, and the power over ethernet splitter and injector, all in one kit. Now for heavy duty screws for the bricks, we use star head screws, uh, so that way it would not slip or strip the screws. Now the screws for the tree were just three inches, regular Phillips head you can use whatever you guys like but that's what we used one of my first questions I ask is where is your router that's the most important thing for me as uh, starting this off in a new location because I need to see the cable path and the options that we have uh, for this install so therefore it's the most important thing we ran the cable from the upstairs bedroom where the router is located uh, up into the attic in between the walls and this is a clip of me using my phone so I can look up into the cable the reason I show you this clip guys is because this is what I do uh, with my phone here I just kind of stick it into the wall even though I can't see the camera and then I look at the recording to see the cable path sometimes it's really hard to like look up into the wall and see the cable so just stick your phone in and you'll be able to uh, see the recording of uh, what the cables look like on the inside and that'll give you a better idea of what to do so then I brought the cable up into the attic and dropped the cable down below these are the two frames right here that you're seeing uh, this is where the cable is gonna be falling through so that was very easy to just pull the cable out from the other side of the wall the testing phase to me is to make sure that everything works before we run a full install. So making sure that the splitters and the adapters are working and then we do an internet test. So what you do guys is I get a laptop and I connect it to the ethernet. Uh, this is the ethernet cable that gets plugged into the, to the miner. And then if you get a good test like this, then you're good to go. After this, I check uh, the placement of the miner. We basically just construct the enclosure to make sure that all the fittings will be working. And then I've checked the gasket and making sure that, you know, the, there is a gasket, there's nothing missing. I like to make sure that there's no bolts missing. So that way when we kind of uh, construct the enclosure, we're good to go. We don't have anything that kind of just stops us in the middle of an install, especially when the tree climbers are right here next to us. This is a good way to test to make sure that everything fits inside the enclosure. This is what you want to do on day one so that you guys don't run into problems on day two if you guys were to split it up like we did. Now, since there was two of us, we were able to work together, one of us in the attic communicating and one of us on the ladder. Of course, that was me. I was able to use a light to help guide my partner and kind of see where I was, where I was working, where I was uh, drilling a hole into. Once we found a good spot, we drilled the hole. We wanted the cable to run down from the side of the house. And then we were easily able to feed the cable through and then finally start to create the cable path that we want. Now, due to my limited time restriction, what I had to do was just get as much done today on day one. For my uh, recommendation for you guys, if you guys can line up the conduit, make sure that it's correct measurements, cut the conduit, and make sure that it's the perfect length uh, before you maybe mount it on the wall or before you actually run the cable through. That would help you save a lot of time as we had to do a little bit of rework. Uh, didn't affect us too much, but it costed us like 20, 30 minutes more of, of work because I had to pull the cable out and then re-put it back in just because we didn't have the appropriate size conduit. Uh, that being said, it wasn't that big of a deal, but just a little bit of advice for you guys. Hope that helps. Starting off strong on day two, I'm going to be using the vulcanizing tape and the electrical tape that comes with the kit to weatherproof the antenna connections. Notice how I'm pulling it super tight so that way it eliminates any gaps so that water doesn't fill in. 
I'm gonna do the same thing, passing over the grounding cable, and then I'm gonna fold the grounding cable right on top of it, and then pass the tape over one more time as I finish to wrap this up. Now we have the ethernet cable ready to go. Uh, we have the conduit also laid out here next to a jug of milk for whatever reason that is, but we have a jug of milk. Uh, we also opt tested the miner to make sure we have some lights turning on. This is gonna be the base that gets attached to the tree, and this will be connected to the rest of the enclosure kit. Now, this is the uh, solar shield combined with the rest of the kit. Uh, the, the enclosure is actually gonna be inside of that once you are ready to go but we're just off testing right now this is how it's going to sit on top of this now this is really important that you make sure you explain this to your uh, tree climber so now we're going to just lay out the conduit in the appropriate manner that we need so i can fish through all of the cable and that being said i'm going to use this fishing line i'm going to tie it to the spade bit and this fits perfectly inside of the conduit uh this is like a 5 8 bit and i'm just going to push this through when it's already tied with the fishing line i'm going to let it fall all the way down through the conduit and i'm going to repeat this process over and over again through the entire process of the conduit so right now I just kind of have it laid out so that way I know how I'm gonna bury it and mount it to the wall and then I'm gonna tie that uh, fishing line the end of it I'm gonna tie it to the Ethernet cable and then I'm going to just pull the Ethernet cable through all of the conduit now if it ever gets stuck just know that it might get stuck inside of the uh, area where the two conduits couple together so you could just uncouple it and then recouple it and you should have no problem getting that Ethernet cable all the way through now notice where the left hand side of the conduit that is going to be put against the wall of the house and the right hand side is going to be laid down and up to the tree we are good to go now we just put the bobcat enclosure together make sure that there's no problems we got lights coming on we are sinking or it's synced already and then now we can seal it all up now we verify it and triple check everything is good to go so this is here we're going to just mount this together seal it all up with the bolts making sure that uh there's no, no cables coming off there's nothing being damaged because once it goes up guys it is not coming back down so uh this is the entire enclosure if you guys want to take a peek notice how we are going to zip tie this together here this is what i was talking about you have to think about it the tree climber only has you know his two hands to hold on uh to tools and this equipment so we zip tied it like this you guys can pause it if you guys need but this will help it from shaking around and this is the final look of the miner that is going to be in our hands before it goes up into the tree and then it starts making some money Right before we get started, don't be surprised guys, if the tree climbers have to cut off any branches before the install, uh, they're not gonna cut off big things, but they will be making room so they can safely do the job and get this as high as we can. Now I did include these clips here. These are cable clamps and they will be used on the way down to clamp down all the cables to the tree. These are really good. They worked a lot better than last time. Now he's gonna carry up this uh, miner in the backpack with the drill bit already inside. He has everything he needs inside. As always guys, you know I like to be a little bit silly sometimes, so remember to have fun with your install now the dude is up here he's drilling the base of the miner down to the tree this is the first part that goes on and then he's going to secure it with the other bolts um you guys will understand if you guys take this process or should you guys use a different kind of enclosure like i have in the past before make sure that he knows all of this before he goes up the cable is probably my favorite part uh splitting the earth and just resealing it is just super satisfying and not to mention it's super easy not really just kidding guys it definitely takes a little bit of work but uh if you can tell guys it definitely is worth it and it comes out pretty neat and pretty clean make sure that the hole is about six inches deep at least so that way you can fold the earth back on top of it and then kind of just stomp on it uh you know shimmy on it do a little dance on it like me you know what i'm saying you'll see Now we get to go and we have the conduit running from the ground and now we're going to construct it back up. But here's the other piece of the conduit. I connected it to the rigid conduit. It helps me just bend and make any curves that I want on the tree. You guys will see that in just a minute. I use a level and I use the markings on the brick to make sure that I was very even and that I kept the conduit as straight as I could. This is the hammer drill that I have here and I'm going to be using it to drill into the brick. There's a specific uh, bit you guys can use for the brick. You guys can look into that. And then I just made a little curve on the top. And if you take a look at right here, this is where the clamps are holding the conduit to the brick. And then I'm going to use what's in my mouth. These are the cable clamps that come with Ethernet cables. Uh, we're going to use that to secure it to the wall right here. Now, again, since I had to pull the cable out of the conduit and redo this part, I will be putting this through here. Now, guys, everything I'm using is in the Home Depot. And then this are the clamps that we are using. You can find any angles here or the conduit clamps. Just make sure you get the right size. If you need a couple or create any kind of uh, connections together, you can do that right here in this aisle. You can also 
also buy some grounding cable from here. It is relatively cheap as you have a lot of options, but again, you can also get it from Amazon. Links are down below and it helps out the channel a ton. So thank you very much for that. This is gonna be the conduit here that is pretty flexible that I use. I love this conduit for very specific occasions. And of course we have this clamp here. This is what I use uh, whenever I'm securing that cable to uh, maybe some tree or maybe the side of a house. Now here I am using the one hole clamp and the conduit, the flexible conduit that I spoke about. I'm gonna be drilling this to the tree with a little bit of an angle so that way water is not consistently hitting this here. I also put caulk inside of that hole and then this is the little drip off loop on the ethernet cable to help alleviate some of that water. Now the ethernet cable splits up and goes into the conduit and then the grounding cable, we're gonna to need to ground it. So I did use this system right here. This is just a four foot grounding rod. It gets hammered into the ground as deep as you potentially can. Now that we're done, we can take a look at the final results of the install and start to look at the earnings. I've been waiting to put this video out because I can't find a time where the network seems to be just working with us. So at the time of this video, it's 22, 23 days later, and we are starting to see some inclination of the network coming back together. This is 30 days, guys, and it's only made uh, five h and basically, which is actually well below uh, the standard that I think uh, this install can do. As you can tell, we have 38 total witnesses, uh, which is not the greatest, but if you take a look at some of these days, there's 0.5, uh, like three or four or five times already, and this is actually actually this first day where we got a 0.5 HNT in one day, which is way above the standard. It's actually five times the standard. Now guys, I have no problem showing you my uh, HNT miners, but this is an install of someone else who hired me. I was paid $300 to do this install. And so therefore just to avoid any privacy issues, I didn't want to put their stuff out there, but I do want to show you guys the results. Now, realistically at the time of this video, if we cut that down in half, we might be expecting 0.2 to 0.3 days, which again is still pretty good because it's like two to three times above the network average. Now, of course, depending on when you watch this video, video the network average will be completely different but what i want you to take away guys is if you put more effort and maybe just a little bit more money for your installs to go as high as you can and you're smart about your locations you can actually make this to be a pretty decent return uh passive income or just residual income there's nothing to really undervalue a lot of people especially us in the crypto space we think that you know 70 80 bucks a month is so crappy uh just because you know all the money that we're putting down which in return in real life it's really not because it's a lot more than other sectors so you're building something that uh, I guess a lot of people aren't really appreciating. So even if you're making just two, 300 bucks a month off of a miner, that is absolutely crazy insane still. Now, as far as was it worth it to pay this much money for, I guess, just hiring me and hiring a tree climber, it depends on how you look at it. Now, not to put this guy's stuff out there, but this person, uh, which could also be you, is planning to expand their helium mining business. And the benefit that I see to them, and I guess we both agreed on, was they were able to learn and fast forward uh, all of this techniques and, and advice on installing these helium miners now what i learned personally from my mentors it's not about how to do things you know step by step it's not just about that it's about thinking about you know asking the right questions and a lot of you guys talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on the discord channel which if you're not already in there i will post link down below in the description but uh, feel free to come ask me some questions now, guys, you guys know most of the time when I answer these questions, I don't have all the answers. Most of the time, my answer is, I'm not really sure, but I will figure it out. And so that's the difference between me and a lot of people. And again, that could be you as well. I don't want you guys to have to feel like you had you need all the answers. I make these videos so you guys can be motivated or you guys can be inspired. Maybe even give you guys some, uh, some good ideas uh, and just learn through my successes and my failures. But at the end of the day guys what's most important for you to make this install or any other install is figuring out how to ask the right questions if you're stuck on you know just how do i do this how to do that it's more of how do you figure out how to do this and that so sorry for the rambling guys but i know a lot of you are just waiting for things to happen and i know that we have conversations one-on-one -on -one, so i know some of you guys know who i'm talking about but at the end of the day if you want these installs to come to play, just make it happen, right? Have the confidence in yourself that you can figure out anything you put your mind to and you'll be able to do it.
not to give out any financial advice, but the best investment you can ever make is in yourself. And so no matter what happens, if you invest in yourself more than you invest in any other little pond economic crypto coin or whatever, no matter what happens, you will be able to take what you have inside of you and manifest it into any business, any helium uh, adventure you want to get into or any cryptocurrency business, because that's what this channel is all about. We'll be able to take these skills and these approaches to anything we want. So for those of you who are growing with us in the channel, I do appreciate you guys being here. But this is much more than just like, hey, watch me do this. It's more of we can all do this together and kind of just all help each other out. For those of you who are still watching, if you appreciate appreciate this kind of stuff and you want to see more hit the like and subscribe and not to mention the like is probably the biggest thing that helps out this video so if anything you appreciate it just hit the like for me and that would go a long way that being said guys i will be seeing you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching my name is gabriel i'll see you guys next time